Yeah, Melissa wants you to adjust the valves on her Twano. That's easy. <laughs> it's the it's the well, V4s she does that. that are a pain in the ass. Oh, hers is a V4. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, really? No, then that's not no. If I if you just gotta check them, it's great. If you gotta change them, it's a pain in the dick. <laughs> All right, so uh, Army of Darkness is back here at uh, KWS Motorsports. It was, uh, it's been a long four months uh, procuring all the parts to do this engine refresh for their endurance season. Uh, the bike's ready to go. So this is a complete refresh. We replaced everything we possibly could that would affect uh, the running condition of this motor over the next uh, season. New valves, new valve springs, retainers, cotters, um, piston rings, all the rods, uh, pistons, all your bearings, gaskets, clutch pack, um, a bunch of the transmission gears because some of their riders are really hard on their stuff. Um, and then just made it pretty again. Uh, got all the dirt and grime and uh, did a little extra safety wire so uh, we don't have to worry about things coming off and them getting through tech and everything. Um, so yeah, we're getting ready to show you uh, a quick putting this thing in and getting it running today and seeing some numbers on the dyno and get them on the road. Um, YT Lechner, I'm in charge of tires and uh, fabrication. I'm Melissa Burkoff, I am mechanic, axle person, overall general wrench. ready to start this thing we're going to uh, start it up for the first time check for make sure there's no leaks or anything uh, anything is possible uh, once that's done we're going to uh, put it through a few heat cycles that's just letting it warm up at idle a couple uh, throttle blips here and there let it build up some uh, temperature okay. let it cool down we're going to do that a few times uh, double, uh, what we were really making sure is that the oil level and the coolant level are topped off before we go on the dyno um, once we get it on the dyno, I'm going to run it in for probably 20 to 30 miles, just low RPM, a little bit of throttle load. And as, as the more I run it, I'll give it a little more throttle until I'm just about going to full throttle. Um, but I'll do that a couple times and let all the air on, the, on our dyno fans just cool the bike down rapidly so we can go through the process a lot faster. By the time I can go full throttle, like I said, we'll have anywhere between 20 and 30 miles. No, it is, this is not a street bike where they want you to put 500 miles on it. If that were the case, we would never be racing. We would just be breaking in motors all the time. Once, uh, once you get a little bit of time on the dyno, and the second I go wide open and we're still good, you can go wide open. The motor is going to naturally seat itself in a little bit over time. 
but for the just just for the sake of time, we would spend hours or days on the dyno just trying to break in and get a few hundred miles uh, on it. Um, the reason they want you to do that on stock bikes is they want you to bring it back in to get that first service. Also, make sure the rest of the bike isn't falling apart. So you're not just going in there because you did a first break in, but also to check engine mount bolts and anything else out when you buy a brand new bike that came off a, a rapid assembly line. When you're doing the heat cycles at the beginning before you put it on the dyno, um, is there a particular temperature you're shooting for? Um, you? um, usually like 180, like get it up to roughly what the operating temperature of the bike would be on the track. Um, if it was a bike that had a regular thermostat in it, we want to at least make sure the thermostat is opening. So we try to get it into that probably 170 to 200 degrees. Um, this bike doesn't have a thermostat. Most race bikes don't. Uh, one, it's a failure part that we don't ever have to worry about, and it does generally let the coolant flow easier. Um, and we had, on this on this particular bike, you get a different set of hoses. We got them, they got them from Samco. They were already on the bike when it came here. And they actually have a whole housing to get rid of the plastic housing that comes stock on this bike that the thermostat is built into. We just have a hose to a special attachment bolted straight to the head. So the second you start this thing up, um, coolant is flowing, they, but they also tend to take longer to warm up. So you have a longer warm up process, but it'll flow better and you don't ever have the potential of a thermostat uh, going bad and not opening. It is rare, but it does happen and you don't ever want that happening on the racetrack because then the thing will definitely overheat, causing all kinds of other problems. On the dyno and they'll video the, I'm like, let me get the bike hot and warmed up and like film the last pull. Don't film me fucking around and doing stupid shit. <laughs> All right, oil cycling. Spank that baby's ass, let her cry. So this is the YEC uh, Yamaha kit. ECU software, uh, which allows us to go in here and change a bunch of things in the actual ECU, much more finely detailed than what you can do with the stock ECU. So this allows us to get in here and change the fuel map. It allows us to adjust the uh, traction control, the wheelie control, uh, and even the way the throttle bodies respond to the grip. Um, so it's all pretty powerful and we've worked uh, over the last two seasons to really do a lot of work on tuning it. Um, not only for each track, but for the riders, so we have to find compromises on the way they want it to work. Um, and now we're going to hook it up to the new engine and see if we can get the most horsepower for the least amount of fuel by tuning the actual map. All right, what do we got? So air fuel is getting better. That green line was from the first set of runs we did. We're getting it flatter through here. We added a bunch of fuel. We're gonna add a little bit more fuel down there. What we did get is we got all this extra power by getting fuel in it. And then you'll see, you'll notice a, a dip here and a dip here. So this is where the stacks were opening and we saw that dip. I, I, I opened them a lot lower on purpose so I could see the transition point. So we're gonna shoot for that spot right there. So we're gonna go somewhere in between the two different RPM points where we open the stack. We want a little bit of dip right there so we're getting all of this power and hopefully all of that power at the same time. Awesome. the stack opening to a uh, crossover point. So if you look right here, that was the, uh, the way it originally came in with a higher stack opening. Now we find this happy medium where we don't, we can get all the power from here and we're not losing any of the power from that dip. So we're getting the best of both sides of the stack opening. Nice.
gets into the 200s? Yes, I did. This is 200 actual horsepower with these weather conditions. And you didn't put like the temperature correction probe in your pants <laughs> or no, something? No, I didn't uh, do any finagling You didn't do of any of your dino tricks? So. Your treachery? 200 horsepower with. Perfectly linear curve? Yep, 86 foot pounds of torque. Healthy. Very healthy, very clean, very good curve. That is a beautiful looking curve. You got us a ton more horsepower at eight grand by fixing the fuel map. Yep. Uh, now we've got a all new part internal engine that we can go and- Flog the crap out of for a season. Flog the crap out of for a season. And thank you so much for You're building welcome. the engine and for all your help on the videos. Yep. And uh, hopefully giving us another Kevin's championship. Kevin's not here, but we both appreciate you being able to come here and then allowing being able to let us do this for you so excellent yeah all right brother cool